but there's a lot going on in your crazy mind, so. <laughs> so who knows what comes out of your mouth, but we'll find I out in the, in the next episode of Sigmund Sense. <laughs> I'm Josh Sigmund. And I'm Bryn Rouse. I'm a mortgage guy with a passion for money, business, and elevating my game. Bryn is my co-host. She's my friend and marketing director for my mortgage team. That's right. I'm a marketing girl, a mama of three, and wife of one. And like Josh, elevating life, business, and relationships, well, it's my jam. This season's topic, elevate your game. What do you want? Do you want to push personal limits, find joy, be more present? Be a better parent, have a sexier marriage, make more money, save more money, start your own business, develop a hobby, or strengthen important relationships? Impact the world, be a better boss, or create a stronger business? Then you are ready to elevate. And this is the place to do it. Are you ready? Sigmund Sense Season 3, Elevate Your Game. Well, welcome back. You ready? I am ready. Let's talk about something cool. Let's talk about elevating the workplace environment. Elevating you. your work environment, as you made it very clear that you wanted Sorry. me to scratch the... Scratch the and do your, and now <laughs> I messed it up. <laughs> elevating your workplace environment. So I think this will be fun because, Josh, uh, the the atmosphere of remote working makes him twitch. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> he does old school, like new it. school. Old school. Uh -huh. But it's it's a good conversation. Uh, let's let's talk about why this is important, right? So we're not going to go into creating a Google space, right, where <laughs> there's fucking slides and happy hours and all that at, at an office. Um, you know what we're going to talk about today is something that's happening over and over across the nation right now, which is more and more people are working remotely. It is more widely accepted by uh, companies. Um, there is definitely pros to it, mm -hmm. uh, that we've found over the last couple of years. There's definitely cons to it. Um, but at the end of the day, our team has gone almost hundred uh, percent remote at this point right. and it's successful so far. And yep. so what are the mechanisms and the, the types of accountability and the metrics and the, what can the privilege be lost and all those things that I want to kind of work through because as Bryn said, I was 100% anti working remote the second it started when COVID started back in 2020. And we had a company mandate at the time that uh, were remote employees for, I think it was at least the first six months of COVID. It, it might have been longer. a long time. Well, it was March through November, we never, right? The office never really reopened. Until, well, it did, but you weren't allowed to go back for six months, I think is what it was. I think it was six months. And so... It was a, a cool incubation period. So mm -hmm. for better or worse, it was it was a cool period because I didn't think that we could do what we do remote. Yep, right. And then um, because of, because of the way that our team was set up um, and our system was set up, uh, every, we had clients coming into the office ten times, twenty times a, a day. A day. Yep. But, but even past that, uh, as a control freak, you right. know, yeah, there's trust issues that. Right. Uh, all companies have with, well, what are you really doing if you're not in the office, right? Because it's so easy to be uh, distracted or dealing with kids or whatever when people work from home. And ultimately, why I've arrived at the conclusion of it's okay to have workplace, for our industry anyways, have remote employees is I track the, because we track everything, mm -hmm. I track the productivity. Our team right. was actually more productive working remote than they were working at the office, number one, which blew my mind. We just got but, that on record. <laughs> yeah, it was, it, it was. You know, mind you, it was also an interesting time in real estate. Real I estate know, and lending for 2020 yeah. and 21 was the hottest it's ever been. Ever been. So part of it was forced. Uh, but sure. the reality was the business was handled and the surveys were great and right. our, our business grew and it was all remote. remote. So you can't, I can't argue as a owner that, that that's not possible to be productive at home. And we just had a, another team outing, what, last Tuesday? Last Wednesday, Thursday? Last Wednesday. Last Wednesday. We had a team outing, and I would argue that the culture of the team is the best it's been. Ever. Okay, I didn't want to say it in case you did it discreet. Yeah, I think ever. Ever. And I've been doing this for 18 years, and it's so, the best. So there's something to it. It's worth discussing it. for the next 30 minutes. Yeah, there's something to it. And I think, I think where the culture comes in, um, one, I think you have to start with a – really clear idea of what the culture is. So right. make sure you have that dialed in. Um, but you, we've always said you are spend more time with your work people than you do your family at times. Yep. And it's hard. Uh, it's hard to live with the people that you chose and made. <laughs> 
at times. And so now you're put into... <laughs> I'm sorry, did you just say the ones that you made? I, I didn't, okay, I get it now. The children, got it, okay. The children, yes, the humans that you created. <laughs> they, they can be challenging to live with, <laughs> as can your spouse that you let alone, handpicked. Let alone having to work with people that you didn't get to that choose. That you didn't get your to boss choose. Your boss chose, that's Correct. Okay, got it. And you're spending more time yeah. with these these other, these non-selected people, yeah. right? Um, and then you add in you know, a bunch of females and different dynamics and clicks and all and these sales, things. There's always alphas. There's always alphas in the sales. Right. And it, it can cause just, we're just around each other too much. And yep. so I think um, just like with spouses, like a little bit of separation is okay. Like mm-hmm. give me a chance to miss you for a second. Same thing applies when we haven't seen each other all week, mm-hmm. eight hours a day, then when we do get to see each other, it's exciting and fun and, you know, all the things. And so I think it just kind of removed that layer of um, all the distractions that come from working next to each other, mm-hmm. really and truly. Um, cause a lot of us are friends and so having your best friends sit right there, it's easy to get super distracted. Yep. Um, you know, we have our meetings, everybody gets up to go to a meeting and we have to talk for a couple minutes and we have to have the meeting and if it runs over, okay, well then we have to talk about it on the way out and then, okay, now it's lunchtime. Okay. Let's get lunch going. I mean, there's just a lot of things that happen in a workplace environment mm-hmm. that are unproductive, Yep, but they just are. Yeah, so you know, there's clearly productive workspaces at, at offices too, right? So that's there the are. that's the the, there the, are. the argument. Uh, but but here's something that that from a core value perspective, I believe in learning and growing. Mm-hmm. And so part of that belief system is that just because I've done it that one way forever doesn't mean that something else doesn't work. And that's the only way I've been able to mentally make this jump personally. It's been very hard for you. It's been but hard. Well, I like my people. Tri- <laughs> like I'm an I personality too, DI, but I, I like hanging out with my people and I like the energy. I like the energy. And, yeah. uh, you know, I, I, I was born in a boiler room of sales and insurance. So I yeah. had 80 people in a room dialing for dollars. And and that to me is a thriving is a culture thriving, from a yeah. perspective. But but as a adult, and I've got younger people working for me, um, and many, many of them have young kids it's interesting and i employ a lot of females um just by happenstance uh, but I've, <laughs> right um maybe it's me who knows <laughs> but i will say that um I've, i had a couple comments over the last 12 months 18 months that were along lines of you don't understand like if i can you know take my one hour lunch that i have anyways and while i'm doing that throw some laundry in and start the crock pot so that when the kids do get off the bus at four o'clock or four thirty, there's food ready versus I'm I getting mean, home at five and now I'm trying to get hours. caught up and then I start to cook and then we're eating at seven o'clock or eight. Um, there's a lot of interesting things that come from that as far as like work life balance and happiness, yeah. let alone separate of productivity, right? right? So I think where we where we kind of start is um, you know, I think it's best to get I guess go through how we do it because because we track everything, mm-hmm. because we happen to be accountable people, um, it worked very well for us. And I don't think that it would naturally work very well for everybody without at least a couple of things that are put in put in place ahead of time. So I think the first thing is in the, in the absence of information, you always jump to worst case conclusions, right. right? So if you're considering a stay at home kind of scenario, then as an owner or an operator or a manager, you have to track things before people go home. Yeah. Because for exa- whatever it is, if you can just think uh, in a IT engineer or something like that, if they can do whatever, as long as it's tracked, whatever you're tracking, they can do this much in the workplace in a 40 hour work week. Then I know as long as they're doing that at home, I can't question it. Can't question right? that, sure. If I know that I'm tracking uh, phone calls and butts and chairs and applications and, and conversion uh, if I and, and I know what that baseline is at work, as long as you're at least doing that at home, I'm good with it. If I know we get this many leads and this many deals per week, and if we're at least getting that, right. why would I argue with it, right? Because that's glue. And what's really interesting now is that from a standpoint uh, as an owner, manager, leader, the attraction of future employees, I believe it's more attractive to people that want to work from home. I've got a, a, girl, a single girl that she, all she talks about right now is she's about to buy a 
uh, what do they call it, a sprinter van. And yeah, she, wa- she yeah. wants to literally every week go travel to some other national park and then work in the van while she's doing working hours, yeah. but then go hiking in a national park. It's like, I get her because I'm willing to say, just do your job well and you're good to, right. to work remotely, right? right? So there's opportunities that we get that we didn't get. It also opens up the pool of potential candidates. Yep, for new candidates, for sure, because you can, I don't care if you work in Alaska. Exactly. I don't care where you live. Exactly, yeah. So there's definitely, yeah. There's definitely Pro- pros, but it, it, I but think the, step one, is, the yeah. step one is you got to track and know your numbers and what's expected of an employee in each position and what their metrics are. Before you send them home. Before you send them home. Because otherwise, you're for sure assuming that if I call you one time and you don't answer the phone for five minutes, you are in the pool. (laughs) I'm I'm just telling you, that's where an owner's mind goes sometimes. Like, if you can't call me back or respond back to my email instantaneously, you're for sure drinking by the pool. That's what you're doing. Um, And I... uh, I'm laughing because it's just comical. Right. Because it's just... Well, know, and the, like, the, no. this really goes to the 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 way that I'm the first way I'm able to overcome that is is understanding what's what the capacity is at work and just expect the same thing at home, right? Yeah. Um, what would you say the for it, that was my first answer? Is there another thing that you should be considering bef- transitioning from your perspective or no? If not, it's okay. I was just thinking no, to make sure I don't to think miss so. Anything. I mean, I, I think everybody has to have. Um, all the things needed to do their job. Oh, that's fair. Like they need. So there is an upfront cost, but it's actually way cheaper. So let's talk, talk about that. Like everyone at our team has multiple screens right. and a plug in place and their, their laptop all at home. Right. Yeah. But what is funny is I don't think about it cause I don't care. I work in my bar when I work remotely. Like I've got a bar in my backyard by the, in the cabana. Right. Uh, that's why you think we're all at the bar. Right. Of course, well, that's what I would be doing. That's why I have to go to an office. To that's why, office. by the way, I am the one person that still goes to the office because I'm capable of bad choices, right? But um, but if I'm willing to go to the bar, why, why wouldn't you, right? Well, Josh, that's why we're here for you. Right, this, well, this is, and this is why this is a good cop- topic because, uh, but what, what, going back to places to work, uh, um, there's also things that come up that are the difference of being professional or not, right? We all have heard the stories over the last two years of the <laughs> naked husband walking yes. through the background because you're set up in your bedroom yes. and the unmade bed is behind you yes. and the bathroom door is behind that and your husband comes out in the underwear or anything, right? Right. And so the being set up for success, there's got to be a fucking workspace. Has it's got to have a comfortable chair. Yes. And, and so things like that, I didn't think about when people were moving. Right. But it comes up. And it so- It yeah. um, Things like expectations that need to be set early and, and st- st- stood by. What do you wear? What do you wear on a Zoom? Right. And I think, you know, this is, yeah, these are things we, are, we have and are at times fumbling through. It's what is, what is the expectation? What's acceptable workplace attire? Right. When you're working at home and then you get into for when you're meeting with clients and when you're meeting with the team. The team, yeah. Right. Because if somebody's not going to be meeting with clients at all, and it's just one team meeting, what do you think is acceptable if they're not? If it's just a team meeting for thirty minutes, what what do you think is acceptable? I mean, I like to see effort. Like that's my thing. Is every so getting up and getting ready every day is part of a routine. So I mm-hmm. think you know, like I have my morning routine. It's it's very rare at this point now because we're because of my position, I'm going out and on appointments. Right. So it's rare that I'm actually home all day long. Right. Um, but it does happen every once in a while. Um, but I, on the, so let's talk about those days on those days. I still get up at the same time. I do all the same things. I just may not put on a full face of makeup. Like my hair is going to be done. I'm going to be bathed, <laughs> you know, and I'm going to put on comfortable workout clothes or whatever. Hmm. That's, but I still, had the routine and got ready. Yep. I guess is the point. And I'll say as a boss, I want somebody to look like they uh, didn't just get out of fucking bed five minutes ago. Right. Like that's what I'm, that's what I think that we're agreeing with. Their efforts gotta be there. Efforts gotta be there. And as a female, don't like, look like you're hungover. Yeah. And as a female, like here are the best tips and tricks. Earrings and glasses. Like if you, they have those blue light glasses now. <laughs> if you don't want to put on a full face of makeup, throw on some glasses Make sure you have earrings on and then either- We're not talking about shades, by the way. No. (laughs) Talking about blue light glasses where you can see your eyes and tell that you're not hungover. That's what we're talking about. (laughs) Yes. And then, you know, just like pull your hair back in a halfie or like, you know, just 
Make sure it's brushed. Dry shampoo is your best friend. Like, and then just standard, like solid black t-shirt, not t-shirt, not t-shirt, solid black tops that are comfortable, but present professionally um, over a computer. Yep. I really feel like those, that yep. pre that presents, it presents well. It's you put effort on because it does take effort to put earrings on and glasses and shampoo in your Okay, hair. we'll go with that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think uh, taking this a step further, you know, we're getting really into like, how does it functionally work? Um, you, you, it is disruptive when there's noise in the background, people yes. in the background, you're not dressed professionally, uh, and you're not on time period. I'm not speaking about you. Obviously it's, this is for the audience. So if you're guilty of it, we've all been on that stupid fucking zoom call mm -hmm. that there's dogs barking kids right. like, so it might not work for you if, from an employer's perspective if you can't get your shit together at home, right? Yeah. So, um, you know, finding a quiet place, making sure that there's a if there's a controlled environment yes. that's and conducive I, I, to work is yes. also important. Um, and as the boss, setting out your expectations early on what the etiquette is for meetings. Like yep. I want everybody on mute, but understand too that when everybody is on mute, you do it does make it feel like the energy is dead. Is is dead. And so yep. you know, we have to keep that in mind and we have to bring it a little bit bigger. Smile, thumbs up, things like that. So I love that you just said this because yeah. you know I, I'm a big believer in one of the tactics I do is I always book in my week. So there's always a Monday meeting by me for the entire everyone's I gotta be on it. And I, we always have a fry yay at the end of the of the week where everyone has a quick half hour. It's a 30 minute, just get on with a drink. It's not about getting hammered, but it's about like, I want to see you at your yeah. workspace first thing Monday morning and at the end of the day on Friday. And it's a kumbaya kind of moment. Now there's actually value being added in the Monday morning meeting, right? But if I'm going to be doing a branch meeting, uh, I don't want you to look like a fucking zombie. Like and I can't cameras tell. Cameras need to be on. And cameras have to be have to be on because I need to know that you're present and ready to work, and you're not just what rolling out of bed. And uh, if you just look like you're frozen on the screen, that's what she means by dead energy. So if I if if your boss is saying something that you it like we're looking for a nod, a right. thumbs up, a I get it. A, you can converse in the chat box. Yeah, but. At, be active yeah. because nothing is more frustrating from a boss who needs and gives energy, but needs the key word. We need energy too. Right. We got to make sure that you're good at home. We got to get the sensation of the, of the week. So if it's just a sit there and stare and wait for it to be over, that's not going to keep you at home very long. Like that's just not yeah. good. Yeah. So, for sure. um, um, and I also think there's things to learn as employees how to set boundaries around your workspace yeah. at home because um like example i just got a new puppy and i have never we haven't had a dog in nine years yeah. and so now i'm like oh shit like i get teddy's gotta be like somewhere else because yeah. i don't want him barking while i'm on this but then he barks if i close my door so like what's the mm -hmm. <laughs> what is the best thing so you have to think through all of those scenarios too with the kids when they get yeah. home if the door is shut Leave it shut. You don't come in. Just pretend like I'm not here. That was a really hard one. That was a really hard one. Yep. Um, both for them and for me because they're home. Like I want to go see them, but I'm on a Zoom or I'm busy or I need to, you know, complete. I need so work to day's out. not over. Yeah. Work day's not over. Like, and typically they are coming in to just ask something. Can I yep. go here? Can I go there? Blah, 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 whatever. And then I found myself being totally taken advantage of like while I was working I'd come out and everybody be gone, <laughs> dispersed around the neighborhood. So setting up rules around that. You cannot leave this house until X time or whatever. Um, if the door's open, you're free to come in. If it's closed, do not come in. So having those boundaries set too really, really yep. helps. And this goes back to there's distract distractions at work in the work environment, like you know, cooler talk. Mm -hmm. Meetings are typically longer than they should be. That's a big one owners yes um they're or redundant or you're having a meeting because it's on the calendar not because it's it's valuable or you're part of a meeting that doesn't that pertain doesn't to you. pertain to you right so so those are waste of times at the office there are waste of times at home too and so what Bryn just went through some very valuable tips of like um you can't clock 40 hours for me if you're working 35 yeah that's the trust the lost trust the one and done we you know um we've had an employee that there's questions around were all hours being worked or not, yeah. period, end of story. 
and she no longer works with us, right? It's just, it's just like, you can't do that. And, um, and the idea is that if we're going to give a long amount of rope, right. you can go play in the yard as far as you want to go, <laughs> then you better be making sure you're getting your job done without exception. Yeah. Now, what's really interesting, and this is not a why you should do this, but it's a, it's an interesting thing. As we know in all businesses, there's A players, B players, and C players, no matter what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And so part of the preemptive strike that you can do to make sure it's successful at home is hire A players. Like be really focused on the training and hire an A player because what's really interesting to me is that the A players, there is no doubt about the 40 hours. In fact, there's questions of if they're working too many hours. Right. So I literally had to do a, a mandatory no overtime for a period of time because I was seeing people, I thought the biggest, um, when we're doing the SWOT analysis, it was burn, uh, you know, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Last year, a big piece of it was burnout. Yeah. So I'm looking at people's pay, you know, they're, yes, everyone should get paid overtime if they're working overtime, period, end of story. It's a legal thing, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but you can't work 60 hours a week forever and not leave your job. It's You're going to leave eventually. Yeah. So as a as an owner, I, I, I've started to recognize, oh my God, these people are literally working 50, 60, 70 hours a week. I have to put something in stone of it's mandatory, no overtime, or it's got to be approved. And now I'm down to, even in the, in the peak season of 2021, this is 2022, which is a, a lighter season of real estate. But in 2021, we got it down to about two or three hours per week because it was mandated. It was like, look guys, get your jobs done faster yeah. and get done. But think about what time is saved. When somebody can, that's working remotely, and I ever thought about this, you have commute time both ways. Oh. You don't have to entirely get dressed, but you should be like presentable for Zoom for the one or two meetings a day that you've but got. But you didn't have but the you, hour drive. You didn't have the hours drive. You didn't have to worry about stopping for gas. You didn't have to run somewhere for lunch or pack lunch. It's just there in the fridge. So what ends up happening that I started noticing is there's some people that are checking their emails way early in the day because they basically rolled out of, out, out of bed and like looked at their email because their office space was right there yeah. and they got caught up in what they didn't get done last night or they See, say, that's, well, it, that is my devil that right. when I am looking like I've been in shambles it's because I started working before I got before ready you got your thing right right it's but I I'm just telling got, you that because I'm like A oh players, I just need to do this really quick and then I Keep working. I'm like, oh, but I can just do this. Oh, shit, yep. it's time A for A players will just keep working and just do stuff. You you can get a lot more work done because there isn't somebody knocking on the door. And it, it does take an extra step for somebody to interrupt you. They have to fucking call you or or text you or email you. And it's acceptable if you don't get back to an email or text right off the bat, right? right. When it was employee to employee. So yep. um, so going back to then, okay, we assume that uh, we have A players and train them well. We assume that we set some good boundaries as far as what work what workplace looks like at home. We assume that we've created some sort of metrics that as long as you're doing this, I'm happy with your with your work at home, right? Mm-hmm. Then the next piece of the puzzle then becomes what is the structure to keep culture? What's the structure to keep yeah. uh, forward momentum? And so I'll just list ours off really quickly. Uh, I already alluded to we have a Monday morning meeting. It's one hour. Followed immediately by, it's actually 45 minutes. We, we were able to decrease it. Uh, <laughs> side note here for meetings. One of the advantages of Zoom meetings is when you're done, you're done. You're done. Like it's really interesting. So when we, when we did face-to-face appointments in, in office with clients, if I had a 30-minute time frame or an hour time frame, client would be there for the whole hour or the whole 30 minutes because it's weird for somebody to drive 15 or 20 minutes yeah. to go meet with you for 30 minutes, 30 minutes. to drive 15 minutes back if you were to be done in 10 and say you drove 15 minutes, be done in 10, drive 15 minutes. But that's, that'd be weird. That's how I felt. With, right. So sidebar, uh, Walker had his first flag football You're doing game. doing a sidebar to the sidebar. I love this. Yeah, Keep going. I know. See how far we can go. Walker had a football game fl- for his first flag football game. It was only 40 minutes long. I said, it took me longer to get here yeah. and walk from the parking lot. Yeah. Play longer. <laughs> yeah. So my point is on a, on a Zoom meeting, like if, if, if a, like we do mortgages, right? People generally care about five things. They care about, what could, do I qualify? If so, what, how much? They care about what's the payment going to be? How much cash I'm bringing at closing? What's the down payment? What's the interest rate? That's about it, right? Well, it turns out that somebody that's well <laughs> qualified can actually get those questions answered within 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Absolutely. So it's not actually weird for a Zoom meeting to end in 15 D- minutes. Right. So you're getting some extra time back for productivity yourself by allowing for Zoom meetings as, a, as an example. Um, I don't think you can 
build relationships virtually. I was going to say, just I do over, think you yeah. can maintain relationships virtually. So going back to maintaining the culture and, and uh, dynamics of your team always starts with a Monday morning meeting, 45 minutes. I always believe in training. So we do 15 to 30 minutes of script training after that meeting. Following that, I meet with all my loan officers every Monday morning for 30 minutes to talk about, you know, what's your goals for the week or what did you do last week? Things like that, right? So very, very quick uh, couple meetings there. We have the Friday, which is purely about celebrations and successes for the week and have a drink together and just giggle and talk, right? Yeah. Um, we have once a month branch meeting that everyone uh, gets together and we do a, we'll do like a uh, rent a place for breakfast where we get the entire room. Yeah. So a Mexican restaurant that opens up early, pay for all that. Everyone hangs out for two hours. We get together physically and then we do a quarterly offsite um, that is just fun. Quarterly get together team and go out, bowling or do yeah. pickleball or go to the movies or whatever, some sort of team outing quarterly. Um, we we require all the people on our team to go attend our happy hours once a quarter. I think it is get that right. Every other month. Uh, every other month, they have to come uh, attend our happy hours for our agents, so that there's interaction with our clients that are agents, as well as interaction with each other. Uh, so it's kind of that that known thing. And then I believe very strongly in, you know, if you celebrate and play together, you stay together. So cr- make making Christmas a big deal, doing. Yeah. Um, charitable endeavors uh, twice a year. So every six months we'll do some something, go feed kids or uh, build- We're having an animal donation drive on October 5th. So doing <laughs> some sort of charitable endeavor twice uh, twice a year, I think is super important. Um, Christmas is at my house. Like this is where the culture committee comes in too. They yep. are still actively meeting over Zoom, <laughs> um, but they are making sure that the culture initiative is intact yep. and moving forward. So yep. there's also intention around, like I said, I think the culture has to be on point. Yep. And that's one way you do that is make a committee around yep. it so that nothing falls through the cracks. Yeah. So um, the structure is really, you don't want to overdo it. I think there's there was a desire for me initially to have more meetings because I wasn't seeing anyone. So I'd have a little bit longer and more of them. And we had to go through like we always do and start removing meetings or, right. or breaking them up. Uh, one thing that Bryn said that's super important, whether you're in office or not, this does make for a better office environment, is go through every six months and look at your meetings. What is the purpose? Is it being accomplished? Who actually needs to be there? And is it too long? Mm. Like Preach. just Just do those four things. I actually so, think I'm allergic to meetings. Like <laughs> <laughs> they like give me like... Well, so, so, so some meetings are important, like right. metrics meetings, like motivational meetings, it like com- review the, meetings. The allergy comes from wasted time. Wasted time meetings that I am a part of that don't necessarily pertain to me directly. Yep. Um, abuse of time, like it's an hour meeting, it's an hour and a half every single time, like that type of stuff. Really get like to the people that have appointments all day long. Yep. Ah, like it because. Yep your day just gets further and further behind and you don't have anything to show for it because you've been in meetings all day long. <laughs> yeah. So I'll tell you, like if you're a boss and you're you're constantly running over, you you are hurting your culture. Yes. So one of the best things that happened for me, I've been a on stage speaker for, you know, public speaking for coaching for over 15 years now. And uh, I work for a guy that is as dialed in of a guy as I've ever met as far as you are on stage for 10 minutes, be off stage at 10.01, right? Yes. Or you're on stage for an hour, it's an hour, an hour is an hour, right? And so he, he always has a clock at the bottom of the stage. And so, you know, when it's time to go, like expect a hook to come grab That's your right. ass. <laughs> well, the point is, is that managing times and expectations, if you're going to have a uh, a virtual team, especially, or, or in person, yeah. if you say the meeting from nine to 10, it better be less than that one hour. And when yes. it runs over, you like you're basically saying whatever you have going on in your life is less important. Mm-hmm. And so start, what, it, what, it, what happens, well. you start on time, be done on time. I think it's more important to be done on time than starting on time personally. I like the idea of starting on time. I'm with but it. For the my, love of God, if you start late, do not go late. Yeah, you can't do that. <laughs> it's basically abusing everybody. Yes. So if you're going to be late, you cut something out of your meeting. That's, that's just the truth. Yeah. So um, be on time and be done on time. But you don't have to fill up the whole hour. So... If you're done in 35 minutes, my team knows it. Uh, at this point, I do it regularly. 
hey, best gift of, that I can give you is time. time. We're going to finish up 15 minutes early. The script meeting's going to be starting in 15 minutes. Yep. Everyone hang off. Go get caught up. Get some coffee. Get, look at your emails. Come back to me in 15 yes. minutes. Yes, As lovely. opposed to me just keeping on fucking talking. Right. Right? <laughs> uh, because they don't need to know how dumb or smart I am. They just want their time back. <laughs> That's more important. <laughs> so I, I find that to be incredibly important. Um, we have gotten very dialed in on meetings. I think we have... A third of the meetings we had five years ago. 100%. And way more impact. And, and you said earlier in this call, the culture is the best it's ever been. Yep. Right? Let's take another pro of working remotely. You have a one-time upfront cost for IT mm -hmm. in most cases. Um, so let's talk about the mortgage industry. The mortgage industry will most likely experience a 40 to 50% layoff in 2022 to 2023 timeframe. Not because real estate's bad. Real estate's actually hot. Hot, hot, hot. It's because all the refinances went to go, which was more than fifty percent right. of uh, of a all lot, mortgages yeah, out there. So, lot, yeah. when fifty percent of loans goes away, there's going to be need for less for fewer employees. And so, um, I value my people, and so I have not laid off a single person since uh, since people started laying people off. I have not. And one of the things I was able to save was I got rid of like fifteen thousand dollars of rent space. Yes, I mean, that's three salaries. That's I mean, that's just what, it, it's a big check. So the advantage is, is that I can have a fixed expense that may be too big or may be too small for my team, but I'm signing for five years. So in growth years that I under, under buy or did I over buy, I think I was going to fill it as an example, as opposed to you can work from home if you'd prefer, I'm going to pay for all your IT, one expense, which is way less than rent one right. time. Right. And, uh, and you're good for two years, three years before you have to get a new yeah, computer. I, I mean... Honestly, it's all the little things too. The copiers, the I water and ice machine. Oh, dude, I found copiers. that was $175 a month. Yep. Like what? For, For water service. and ice? Yep. So yeah, I mean, there's just. There's there's a whole lot of savings that goes into it. Uh, and people don't even think through it all. It's it's a massive, massive. The food that Should you I, guys buy? I pay buy? for food like, every single month. Yes, all the food that's week. stocked in, yep. our, in the. In the break room, which yeah. is it's good. If you're going to go to the office space, it's, it's, this is a good takeaway for you guys. So Since the title was how to have a better work, ex uh, work experience or workplace, uh, if you do have in office, provide fucking food. Stock that like, bitch we, full. We had a budget. <laughs> With I wanna good say, stuff. <laughs> I want to say our budget was 1000 a month. It was close to it. Where I just have healthy snacks, uh, some some candies. There's some fun stuff. There's, There's some, some healthy fun stuff. stuff. There's, There's uh, frozen meals. Yeah, buy some sandwich meat. Buy some frozen meals. Buy some crackers. Yeah. Uh, sparks to for energy uh -huh. or like stuff to mix in water. Lacroix. Uh, unlimited waters. coffees. Unlimited yeah. like all that stuff. We not just unlimited uh, unlimited coffees. We my team when we moved into our new office wanted to get a one of those expensive <laughs> like frappuccino kind of bars. Nespresso. Nespresso scenes. Yeah. So they had fun with it, and and I think it's really important for that work environment. What's funny is everyone has that shit at home. Um, so really? from a cost perspective, there are advantages to yeah. working remotely uh, from a owner's perspective as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, what what was next? I know I gave a thousand things on the list, but I, don't I think wanna, that's wanna, uh, that wraps it up pretty good. Just um, double check, make sure there's nothing. So we talked about the structure, the accountability, and the in the culture. Yep. Um, feedback loops. Oh, and, that's important to talk yeah, about. Yeah. And loops. one thing too is training. Like what do you, um, do you have that's an probably effective, the biggest negative. Yeah. The yeah to me, the, the, the hardest thing to do is train remotely. Now it, it doesn't mean it's impossible. It's There's not, a thousand right. companies that do it. Like and start thinking, of, yeah, we've, well, we've, we've had to, we've adjusted. Yeah. We, we were forced to stay home for the first six months. So we just had to adjust because we hired four or five people during that period of time. Mm -hmm. Um, but the, it has to be more structured. There has to be more yeah. playbooks. There's got to be more online uh, access to tools or uh, FACUs or all those types of things yeah. that you just have to spend some time doing. It doesn't mean it's impossible to do. Right. Um, what What is missed by doing remote uh, training is you don't get the feel of how it's going as early as you might other way with, with somebody right. in office. And so... Feedback loop, since you brought that up, a great example is when we hire somebody, they are required every single day at the end of the day to give an uh, email of what they learned today. Like there's four questions. Off the top of my head, I'm going to make sure I get them right. It's uh, what did you learn today? Um, what did uh, what problems are you having? What resources do you need? And how are you feeling? Yeah, I think those are the actual four questions. Those four questions have to be emailed back at the end of every day to their boss and me. 
and actually I think it's my secretary as well. There's three people that are usually on that. On that. Mm-hmm. So whoever the manager is, my secretary and me. That's a huge win. That's a big win for so many different reasons. Like oh. here's start here. If they can't type <laughs> and they can't spell and their auto check can't actually figure out what their writing's because that bad and they're re- working remotely, this is a problem that's for a problem. communication down the road with your clients, right? Yeah. So that's a basic It's also, it's a against. really good indicator of their communication style. Yep. Um, you'll get stories and novels and you'll get one-liners. So that's a Bullet really points. good indicator. And if they forget to do that, like if they can't get back to their boss with a mandate, they're not getting back to your clients. So it's a really good yeah, way to figure like, that shit out early. Yeah, there's some people that just um, forget to turn it in, like forget to do it. Yep. It's like good. And there's some people that it's done like way better than you ever thought was going to be done. Yeah. So the the idea, we've had feedback on those things that were like, I can handle more. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, great. Like, um, thank you for the feedback. Yeah. Uh, how are you feeling? I feel uh, I feel down, but I know that it's coming. I know there's yes. a learning curve. So you know when to reach out separately right. on a random one. By the way, I do meet with, I have lunch with every single person on my, on my team, recurring calendar once a week forever. Uh, and I call all my teammates on all their birthdays, their anniversaries, uh, and I do random calls when my gut says I picked up something on the Zoom meeting that their energy was off. Yeah. So those are some things I do to to try to make sure I yeah. stay involved. But going back to the feedback loop, there's a, there's a few things separate of that email for the training. One of them is is that uh, it took many years for us to do it, but our team is okay with conflict, right? Yes. And so when somebody is everyone at your company affects everyone else's job directly or indirectly. That means that somebody else at the company has to understand that when somebody's fucking up, it's, it's hurting us all. It's hurting us all. So they have to go back to the person and say, hey, dude, you're dropping the ball here. Right. That's feedback. But then if you don't handle it, it they need to expect it's going to come back to the boss because yeah. we have to fix this because it affects our entire team. It affects the entire branch. It affects the company, whatever it's going to be. And so having conversations about conflict and, and what healthy conflict looks like I think is really, really important when you're working remotely yes. because it's too easy to hide or be buried or like just not bring it up and just start looking for a different job yeah. if you're frustrated. So if you're the boss that you get negative feedback, you got to be okay with and thankful. Thank you for sharing this with me. Now Dang you can decide to do something with it, but you can't attack or defend or deflect. Like, right. thank you. You got to welcome that feedback to make it more more uh, healthy for them to come back again and again yes, and again because they know point. that it's an open ear ready to, to have the conversation. Yeah. Um, and through that vein, you've got to have your spies. I really believe in that. Mm-hmm. Having a few people that are your ride or die people on your team or your company yeah. that they will keep a, like you will never violate the relationship. Meaning if they tell on somebody, their name will never be brought into it right. ever. Ever. But they know that one of their pieces of value to you is, you got to whisper in my ear. Yeah. When you when you are hearing things through the grapevine, when somebody is upset about a change or whatever, I need you to tell me because I can't fix what I don't know is broken. Right. So that's what I mean by having that feedback loop. Loop. Yep. I love that. I final love thoughts. It. I don't have any final thoughts. I feel like we that was great. My final thoughts is this: go back to where we started. If you are if 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 somebody else in your industry is working remotely, it's possible. So I'm not saying it's right for you or your company. What I am saying is that. Uh, that there are more uh, advantages that I've run across than disadvantages to a, a remote employee from a standpoint of attraction, retention, and cost, and cost, which all which all affect the business. It does. Okay, here's my final thoughts. Um, if you are considering it, ask your people what yeah. they think what they want, what, what they, they think. Want. It's amazing. Uh, no one you. was telling me because they all knew my opinion. <laughs> Finally, I just asked and they're like, uh, we would love, love that opportunity. But we don't want to come back. So uh, in we, this case, it saved a ton of lease space for me and is more productive at half your people with the best culture we've had. So yeah. uh, it does work. But thank you for, for uh, reaching out to us every once in a while. How can they give us Absolutely. updates? Or Make sure you subscribe and share and do all the things. Um, you can find us on all the platforms and email us if you need us or have comments or questions. Sigmundsense at gmail.com. You have a blessed day, guys. Bye. Cheers.